morning, Vanderbilt. It's me, Johnny. And I'm Carly. That's right. If we had a nickel for every time we had an audience as beautiful as you, we'd have five cents. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Morning View. And glad I could pick you up this, this fine morning. I liked it. Thank you. Thank you. Good accent. I like, I like the accent. Has all of your years living in the South? Led you to create a good southern accent. Ah, yes. Well, hey, is that what it is? On that note, in my time in the theater, am I, <laughs> there I, you go. I imitated my little brother, who still has. I used to have a southern accent. Mm -hmm. Right. I imitated my little brother for. Uh, a, does he have a thick southern accent? Uh, yeah, he still does. It's hysterical. Really? Too, he's like me, minus fifty pounds, mm -hmm. with a baritone voice and a thick southern accent. <laughs> That's go, so around. funny. <laughs> <laughs> And he says, John, you were imitating me up on stage tonight, weren't you? He's like, yeah, that's right, I was. And then I won all sorts of awards for my imitation of my little brother. Look at you. And so he's sitting there. I can't say the choice words he used, but he, he was. He was not happy. He was like, you jerk. <laughs> <laughs> How old was he? Uh, at the time, this was my like, jeez, 15 year old little brother. That's so funny. You're mocking me on stage and getting accolades. I'm not like <laughs> this. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, buddy. Sucks to suck. Oh, God. Yeah. That is very funny, though. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. It's always good to upgrade to an accent, too. Exactly. Well, even though you have accents, I do have a bone to pick with you. As you guys know, John was on air Thursday with the other Carly, and he said he upgraded to Carly. So I guess I'm not good enough for John anymore. For even though I'm still with Carly. Even though I brought right. him some good snacks. I was confused by the name. I, oh, I, I oh right. I'm sorry. I, okay. See, guys, if you're going, right. if you're going to do a thing with like two women, you have the same name. You can just say you're confused. Right? It's full proof. No. Not full proof. <laughs> not full proof. I'm offended. It wasn't. But it's okay. It, it wasn't an upgrade because of co hosting skills. It was because she was blonde. Okay. That still doesn't make it better. <laughs> What? As long as it's not, first of all, as long as it's not co-hosting skills, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Yeah. Vanderbilt can judge for themselves. But I, I know, oh, why, why do why Bernadette hate blondes so much? We don't hate blondes, just the fact that you're upgrading is upsetting. Upgrading? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's say you said upgrading, you know. Upgrade? Well, Whatever, yes, it's yes, okay. I told me got to get an upgrade, so I, I, I don't feel it was necessarily an upgrade. Okay, okay. But it was nice. I like will blonde. say, I was home for the weekend, everyone kept being like, Harley, your hair is extremely dark. What is that about? Cause my whole family has like highlights and I don't know. And I was like, this is my natural color of hair and this is. I gotcha. You're the one girl that's whole now. So true. There Just a matter go. of time till I get some low lights. That's except right. I'm not going to. Can you imagine me as a blonde? blonde do. I'll go do a blonde do. I would look so stupid. And then so I could have a blonde color. Stupid. I would <laughs> look so stupid. It would be awesome for me though. You should dye your hair red. Red. Okay, I dye blonde, you dye your hair red. Dye it red. Well, I. Well, how does. I don't even know how to get my hair dyed, actually, but I don't know. Do I really want to be a gender? Or a platinum blonde. I have on a good authority. They don't have souls. Maybe platinum blonde. Whatever you want. I could be platinum blonde. You could. Yeah, okay. okay, do red. Do red. Or do red. I, I, I want to do something that won't work because blonde will absolutely not work. There you go, Vanderbilt. Platinum blonde will work for me. You heard from, uh, from Can you imagine right? with platinum blonde hair? It would be great. I would be like Doc I Miller think. from Top Gun. Oh, my God. Not Iceman, but Rice Man. It would be amazing. There you go. Right. <laughs> but it's neither here nor there. Just picture me with the platinum blonde hair. There you go, guys. Good. I used to have it actually when I was a kid. But okay, the see, there you go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I talking. knew, I knew. Right. But, but, uh, in other news, other than my hair, um, <laughs> which is fantastic news, 11 student organizations have submitted applications for reg and will register status with uh, consulting containing faith based requirements. For leadership and an act to protest against Vanderbilt's all comers policy. The coalition, calling itself Vanderbilt Solidarity, in a statement released today said it could not, in good faith, comply with the university's terms. Eleven groups associated with Van Vanderbilt Solidarity are Asian American Christian Fellowship, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Crew, Medical Christian Fellowship, Navigators, Graduate Christian Fellowship, Bridges International, Lutheran Student Fellowship, Every Nation Ministries, Beta Upsilon Chi and Christian Legal Society. In other news, audiologists at the Monroe Carroll Junior Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt say long term hearing loss is possible because of proliferation of smartphones, portable gaming systems, and media players. According to Vanderbilt led study, hearing loss is now affecting 20% of U.S. adolescents ages 12 to 19 at a 5% increase over the past 15 years. 
Audiologists at Nashville's hospitals say if parents can hear a sound coming from their children's headphones while they are being warned, it's probably too loud. But then again, I could have told you that. A rule of thumb is the 60-60 rule. Using only 60% of the device's volume for no more than 60 minutes at a time. After 60 minutes, give your ears a break for at least an hour. Prolonged exposure to high volumes exhausts the auditory system, experts say. That's why I'm sitting next to Carly's heart. Past professors and course evaluations will be made available for students beginning in fall 2012 as a result of the VSG initiative, four years in the making. Student body president Adam Meyer hopes the new system will provide a more comprehensive and reliable alternative to the popular RateMyProfessors.com that I was on earlier. On Rate My <laughs> Professors, you get the people that really hate the professors and the people that really love the professors. With this, you'll get the actual average data, Myers says. Additionally, the system aims to allow students to view course evaluations even if a particular course is being taught by a new professor, an option that Rate My Professor does not offer. To encourage participation in course and professor evaluations, students will only be able to view past evaluations if they completed their course evaluations from the last semester. Tricky. I like it. So. It's true. It's smart, though. I really like that idea. Yeah, I was on Rate My Professor last night, and some professors aren't on there, and it's very frustrating. It is. It is. You know? And, you know, you'll get, you'll get the people that obviously just failed the course, and you can't tell true. whether or not exactly. they're, um, just whether better, they're you actually know? cool or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. But it's very true. It's not a very reliable medium. That's why I trust my grapevine network. But That's true. Like it's, oh, it's, yeah. No, it's reliable to ask people around you. Oh, yeah. No, like it's they know best, you know? That's what I always do. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, I, I use my fraternity's lister. Big time. Just asking tons of questions. They're actually like, hey, if you wanted to take a political science theory course, like, they're, they're like, stop emailing me right now. <laughs> That's so funny. I major in engineering. They're like, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it lots is, of emails it's, going around. Absolutely, but it's worth it. So I can now have the awesome schedule I have next semester. There you go. Right. You have it figured out already. Yeah. Oh right. I was the first day of senior registration. So. So what are your classes? All of my classes. I got uh, music and fall segregation. I'm mm -hmm. taking the elections course. Oh, Which cool. I hear is supposed to be very interesting. They mm -hmm. only teach it once every three years. Wow. What else am I taking? I'm taking um, The Last Empire of Islam. I'm an Islamic Studies minor, so that one's about the Ottoman Empire. Uh, I'm taking a constitutional law class, mm -hmm. so I want to know what my cool. rights are. So no one can stop me. And, there you and, go. Wait, there's one other class in there that I'm missing. I'm sure it's a fascinating course, and I'll be taking it next semester. So I better very follow. exciting. Yeah, so. You bet. Very exciting schedule ahead of you. It will be. But even more than that, Vanderbilt, we have an exciting interview turned by a devilishly good-looking man. I forget his name, but I, I heard some women say, oh, I don't think that's his name, but maybe that's just... Is that his name? Maybe that's... Oh? Oh! And it was followed okay. by a thud. I'm not sure if they just ha you have to act out this name or if it's... <laughs> or if it's a weird, like, cultural thing. I don't know. Anyway, we should get on with the original cast interview, so let's take a look. That's right. Hello, Vanderbilt. We have a special treat. We have Maddie and Haley here representing the original cast show that is happening later on this week. So, what are your positions within the show? Um, I'm the director, um, so I've sort of come up with all the artistic concepts for the show. I'm also starring in it as well. Well, there we go. <laughs> and I'm the publicity director this semester, so um, I came up with the logo and flyers and I'm just publicizing the show together. Yeah, you, you get the people in the seats. Like exactly. It. Okay, and so you're a director, so that gives you kind of a good amount of power, I imagine, right? Yes. All right, yes. I know we were discussing beforehand, you said you do not have the director's chair. No, I don't, but I've thought, I've definitely thought about it. I, I, I mean, it's not too late, really. I, I feel like I could still, I could still swing that and throw a star on the door and just, you know, really, really take rain of everything. Like take control. You can get the blow on. You can start yeah. giving commands. But I imagine you said you were also starring in it, so it might be hard to both sit right. in the chair Do both. and actually enact exactly. it. Okay. Okay. I can see the methodology for not having right. the chair. Okay. Okay. But okay. So, as director, is there a specific concept that is going into what the show is going to be? Mm -hmm. We've basically built our whole show around um, the concept of doors and what they represent. Um, so we have four doors as our set pieces and they're all on wheels and they move and we're sort of exploring the idea of um, doors opening and doors closing, opportunities coming and going, doors being slammed in your face, you know, on all the unknown and uncertainty that comes with what's behind the door and, and the decision to, to open or close it. So that's sort of how we chose our musicals that we're doing and sort of how we um, created this, this story that, that we're, we're going to do. Okay, so you did, did inter, inter, I guess, twine each of the different uh, stories from the different musicals to make sort of a linear... 
kind of. We, we, we basically, it's very minimal dialogue. The show, we took, we have about 30 songs um, from various musicals, and each of the musicals has sort of something to do with, with um, the Dora concept, which is how we chose them. And we basically took the songs we liked from those musicals and put them in a feasible order and created our own characters out of that. So all the characters um, live sort of in this one apartment building. Gotcha. And so they're all sort of assembled in Brooklyn, New York. And so in putting the songs in an order, we created this sort of musical in itself. Sort of, and that's how we do our sort of review style show. Gotcha. And, and for those who don't understand, what, what is the exact uh, format of original cast? It's got a very unique way that they put forth everything. Yes, um, the original cast, uh, we're a 15-member group this semester, and it's entirely student-run, so Maddie and our producer Chris came up with the whole concept for the show, and it's totally student-run, so I'm doing publicity, we have a person doing costumes, another person in charge of tickets, another person doing tech, so um, it's all us, and like we hire musicians, so it's completely student-run. Oh, wow, so, you, so everybody's got it. Are there elections that go into who gets each position, or...? Yeah. There are, there are. At the end of every semester, um, we have an election day where people can run for the various positions, give a um, spiel, and then uh, we vote on the next semester's board. Interesting. And when, when does recruitment happen? Is it like uh, just kind of beginning of first semester? Well, yeah, at the beginning of each semester, we sort of have a big publicity mm -hmm. drive and get people to audition um, after we've selected the board, and the board sort of selects those members, new yeah. members we have. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of, so your job doesn't quite end yet. It, 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 after you finish publicizing for the show, you got to publicize for new members as well? Well, that, that'll that be next semester's publicity director. That's the first okay. thing on the agenda, to round up new members. Yep. Gotcha, okay, well that's exciting. Sure. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, okay, and, and, and I'm very interested to know, all right, so you got the four doors that's gonna be uh, used to interweave all these different stories. Mm -hmm. uh, but I imagine so there's probably a lot of costume changes that happen as well to yeah. so, like, get into each character. Yeah, there, I mean, there's a lot of just like logistics that goes behind it um, because we, you know, you have, everyone has their one solid sort of solo character and they have their sort of costume for that character. And then everyone sort of plays the ensemble in everyone else's story. Interesting. So it could be, for example, there's a character named Frank, it could be his song. And all the people in the apartment sort of become part of his song, part of his ensemble, and his sort of cheerleading squad for what he's he's <laughs> going after, what opportunity he's seeking. So I mean, the logistics of that, you know, getting people in and out of each number, and you've got four other characters roaming around that are the doors that are just weaving around the stage at all times. So people basically. aren't playing the doors then. Well, <laughs> no. I we got excited. <laughs> Somebody's the doors <laughs> doing their I felt oh, really bad. Like, sending out a cast list saying, "Sorry, you're a door. <laughs> you're welcome." Not even the cool one. Your door, door number three. Your door three. Behind serious number three. Yeah, it's okay. really that would not be good. But we we basically push the doors all around um, the stage to sort of create different environments and different stage environments and. Um, sort of exemplify where we are, whether we're in the apartment building outside of it, or if the doors are off, we're sort of completely away from the apartment building. Okay, so, so this is interesting. You can actually change the shape of the room by the way you position the doors. Basically, kind of, yeah. Okay, so the the actual set itself is elastic and can change positions. Right, yeah. So it's so, it's so that we could, we, we like the idea of the doors because they're sort of um, malleable in that way, and we can, we can have, a, it, it created a lot of opportunities for us to be both sort of like, metaphorical with them and, and more, more literal. So um, sometimes they're just representing an obstacle, but sometimes they are literally representing like another room. Interesting, okay, and okay, so you got, all right, you got those moving around. You said there are roughly 30 uh, musical numbers that are within the show and 15 members, so each person gets at least one solo. Yes. And all right, so what's, what's your solo? <laughs> My solo is called uh, The Bear, the Tiger, the Hamster, and the Mole. Um, I play. <laughs> it's, 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 it's one of the more interesting ones. Um, I play a, a feminist artist. Um, and, and so the, the whole song is uh, it, it's pretty humorous. And um, I'm just going on and on about uh, how women don't need men. And um, all these animals, all the females, can survive on their own without their male counterparts. I see. Okay, so the hamster can get along just fine exactly. without, without daddy exactly. hamsters Absolutely. on the wheel, right? The mole is an independent woman. <laughs> she, yep. is, she, can, she can burrow straight out of that place yeah. if she wants to. Okay, not the delta too. Okay, fantastic. 
All right, so that's, you got a fun one. What's your, what's yours? Got, we have two very interesting solos of, of all the people to pick. I, I sing a song called Doctor's Orders, and um, the char- there's a character who's the producer. He's playing um, Dr. Alan Roberts, and he sort of his sort of obstacle is that he he's married, he has this great life, but he feels like his his life is somewhat unfulfilled. And so we, I'm sort of like a, a muse or a dream. And we have, yeah, yeah. Dream girl. Uh, obviously, I'm basically a dream, yeah. dream girl. Exactly, yeah. right. I mean, I thought so, that. Okay. <laughs> so basically, I sing a number when he's asleep, and, and we're appearing in his dreams, us, us and all the, the rest of the chorus girls. And I sing a song called Doctor's Orders. This is very seductive. Oh, it's a fantasy, really. Okay, so, okay. I imagine so, yeah. costume is probably pretty interesting. For yeah, that. there's a lot of nurses on stage. A lot of nurses on stage. Okay, so you got backup. Are you one of the nurses as well? I am. You are one of the nurses? <laughs> Okay, well, guys, you gotta go to show now. All right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, seductive <laughs> dreams, nurses running everywhere. I mean, it's gonna be so exciting if your heart stops, at least you got medical personnel on hand. Yes, yeah, exactly right. Okay, well, fantastic. That's fun. Okay, so you guys you guys each get your, your distinct your distinct act, and, and you get to do What's your favorite supporting position that you have in one of the different shows? I mean, I, I personally, my favorite song in the whole piece is, is the closing number, Holding On. Um, and it's sort of, I mean, while we're still playing our characters, I think it's just a, a song that sort of speaks to everyone. Yeah, sure. and, and we're sort of just like representing the concept at that point and the, the idea we're um, sort of trying to convey with the whole musical. And it's just, I mean, it's just a great number. So that's, that's my favorite number to be a part of, even though I'm not necessarily playing a nurse. The seductive that, nurse right. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's running around. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Which one would you say would be your favorite? Um, well, that, that's also... Other like, than being her nurse, right? right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or his nurse. Well, that, that is one of my favorites. Um, but I, I love this show because there's a lot of great dance numbers, and um, I grew up doing dance. So probably um, Live in Living Color, and there, there's, a big, there's a few big dance numbers that are just a lot of fun. Okay, so okay, you take it out. Okay, so the ones that you have most interesting dance performances. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fun. All right. Cool. So finally, here, there's, you, you have an open door for all sorts of opportunities to see both dancing and singing. Yeah, exactly. Basically, all those shows you kind of should have already seen, but you haven't, you, know, you can kind of see them all at the same right. time. Right? <laughs> yeah, we're just giving you a, an excellent show. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, well, hey, why don't you tell them when and where it is? It's oh, great. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, our show is called Facing Empty Spaces, and uh, it will run April 12th through 14th. It's a Thursday through Saturday. Um, at 8 o'clock at night in Langford Auditorium. So if you're going on a spring formal, it's okay. You can come to the Thursday night show. And uh, tickets are on sale at the Surratt box office. They're on the card for $10, or you can buy them at the door. There you go. You can buy, you can buy it at the door. Opportunity's not <laughs> at the door. <laughs> Back to you guys. I know I will definitely be seeing that performance this weekend. Absolutely. Great interview job, John. Good job, John. Fantastic. Great interview. You are the best. We loved it. You're like a celebrity on campus. I am. I but am. we have more celebrity news other than John. So it's a three-peat for the Hunger Games. This past weekend, the Hunger Games once again continued to reign the box office, earning an estimated $33.5 million in box office receipts nationwide. In the past three weeks from when the movie came out, it has taken in $302.9 million domestically. In addition, this past weekend, Titanic 3D came out and made an estimated $17.3 million. It ranked as number three in the box office this weekend after the fourth installment of American Pie film franchise, which came second. So if you're in the mood for a relaxing night in, definitely check out one of these three movies and you'll be in for a treat. Heidi Klum wants... Heidi Klum has officially filed for divorce from husband Seal, her husband for seven years. TMZ reports that Klum is requesting primary physical custody of the couple's four children, Lini, seven and a half, Henry, six and a half, Joan, five, and Lou, two, with Seal, 49, getting visitation rights. They told Us Weekly that while we've enjoyed seven loving, loyal, and happy years of marriage, after much soul-searching, we've decided to separate. So here's all the luck to them finding a happy future. And on a happier note, Jake Owen is finally engaged. The country music star Owen had a big surprise for his girlfriend Lacey 
Buchanan when he took the stage at a charity performance in his hometown Saturday. A marriage proposal. She said yes, of course, and he is tweeting that this is, his life is now complete. So here's to the happy couple. And last but not least, I do not wish I was blonde because it would not look good on me, but I have yet more award shows to update you on. Last week was the Academy of Country Music Awards, so for all of you country music fans, take note of all these awesome winners. For the Entertainer of the Year, for the second year in a row, the award went to the one and only Taylor Swift. The Album of the Year and Top Female Vocalist went to Miranda Lampert. The Top Male Vocalist went to Blake Shelton. A Top Vocal Group went to Lady Antebellum. And the Top New Artist went to Scott McCreary. For more information on this eventful night, check out all the winners of the night. I know I listened to so many music after reading these winners and already love the Song of the Year, which went to Jason Aldean featuring Kelly Clarkson in a song called Don't You Want to Stay. There has been a little ghost in the teleprompter shooting some skills. messages <laughs> about being blonde. N really? I mean, maybe, maybe the... One of them was. Maybe, and the other ones I just maybe. skipped over. And that you think you should be with Heidi Klum, but it was okay. <laughs> I understand. Right. I heard she, uh, she wants physical custody of the kids. She does. I want physical custody of her. <laughs> talk, okay. about, t talk about a blonde mom show. Let me, just, let me just point out that, that right there. Okay, John. I'm so glad you've left Seal, Heidi, so that we can finally be together. I can see that your all-nighter is not stopping <laughs> you from making your jokes. No, is that correct? never. No, it makes it even worse. Oh, <laughs> it makes it even worse. You know, and particularly when you don't read the things that the uh, Everywhere Spirit has put into, into the... I'm into so the sorry. I do apologize. The forces of the universe are telling her what to say, and she's not saying it. It's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. Next I time. have been in cahoots with the forces of the universe, Vanderbilt, and, uh, and they have given me the secrets to an all-nighter. All right, and I say this because I am on about you know, 45 minutes of sleep, and so I am fully aware of what it, what it took to get through that all-nighter and pump out my 10-page paper in just that amount of time. So Vanderbilt, listen up, take notes, and get ready. Final season is coming. First of all, you're going to want to find a dungeon. Think about it. Those Dungeon uh, Dragon guys, they might not have girlfriends, but they sure as hell have good grades. True, true. Plus, there's nothing else to distract you. I know I like the hide and central, don't steal my spot, where I know nothing in the world could interest me. Certainly not all the books that are on me. Second, you want to caffeinate and dominate. But on that note, when your hand starts to shake, it's probably a bad sign. I know uh, I went into Venable Student Health and uh, they, uh, they, to get, uh, get some of my uh, pills renewed, and they uh, took my heart rate and like, oh wow, you've got a resting heart rate of about 120. That's probably not very good. And I said, don't worry, that's just the caffeine pills talking. <laughs> I'm sure it rests much below that. Another tip, do not sit with your friends. I know, you wanna talk, you wanna chat, you wanna share little cute, uh, cute uh, memes and things like that on, online. No, 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 no. Think about it. all the time you could save by staring at a wall every time you're not studying. What's more interesting, learning or a wall? Depends on what you're studying. <laughs> Next thing, don't update Facebook every two minutes. Seriously, we don't really need to know what's going on in your life and exactly what kind of misery level you're in, even though I may have been a culprit of this last night, uh, where y you don't need to update your status to say, oh my god, wish I was outside. Of course you do. It was beautiful outside. We don't care. Catnaps. Make sure they are no longer than 15 minutes. It's actually been proven that if you go beyond 20 minutes, you start to fall into another level of sleep. Whereas if you stay in that 15 minute, uh, 17 minute range, you're actually gonna stay just in that service level of sleep that you can pop right back out of. Take it from me, I'm a catnapping king. So maybe, maybe I actually had an hour of sleep because you know, while I had 45 minutes, I may have had like 15 to 20 minutes of like catnapping somewhere in there that allows me to be so chipper in the morning. I don't know if this is a good, uh, is a good sales pitch, but I feel like, I feel like it could be. And last, don't let opportunities distract you. I'm saying this because I was sitting in the library and I noticed that Lamar Alexander was uh, about 10 paces down the hallway uh, preparing to give a, a, a speech. Uh, and uh, and like, I, I couldn't have walked right up and talked to him. Police officers would have been upset about that. But the point is, I, I went in and listened to his, his, his uh, presentation for just a little bit. And I feel like I probably could have used that better study, to tell you the truth. Because let's face it, don't let learning get in the way of your grades. We're all playing a game here, Vanderbilt, because truly if you want to advance in life, it's not what you learn, it's what you can prove you think you learned, right? And so you're going to want to play the game and don't let opportunities like watching the governor of your state present distract you from something important like 
your 10 page research paper. So Vanderbilt, these are my slightly cynical, but probably very true tips to survive in the all-nighter. I suggest you try them out before actually doing your all-nighters though, because you don't want to have a short circuit moment like I did at about three o'clock in the evening or morning, whatever it was. Yeah. There you go, good tips, I good know. tips. But I if you want some energy to keep you going while you've been studying, I, I do. Yeah. I do have some snacks. Unfortunately right now it's Passover, so I'm not allowed to eat anything with bread or flour. Oh. Or rises. So I have some egg matzah just so you could have a little taste of what I've been going through and will be going through for the next couple of days until next Saturday. I can't have anything that rises. Can I have anything that rises? No. Okay. So this that is what I've been eating. Coffee frog? No, you yeah. have coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but put some Nutella on it. It's not good matzah without something good to eat it with. Mm -hmm. Lots of Nutella on it. Nutella is my favorite, personally. <laughs> this is my favorite topping, but you know, everyone has their own favorite. Thank you. Fanbell, Homemade she, snack. She may not be blonde, but she does cook, so. What can you ask for? Yeah. Let me know how it is. And while well, you test that out, Fanbell should know that there will be a high of 70 today. It's currently 52 degrees outside. It's nice, getting chillier than before, but it's still gorgeous out. Mm -hmm. So you can enjoy your Nutella and matzah while sitting out on the grass. How is it? Fantastic. You like it? <laughs> it reminds me of France when I had the Nutella crepe. There you go. At your recommendation, actually. Really? Yeah, as you mentioned, I need a Nutella crepe. So Nutella crepes are the best. The best are like there's little carts when <laughs> you're on like, yeah. like the little streets, like not the big streets, but little streets have like mini carts. And it's like two euro. You go up and they make you this huge crepe that you just take on the go and you eat it as you're walking around. And it's the best. It is. I discovered it's kind of hard to keep from making a mess, though. That is true. I don't know how the French do it. They manage to keep their belt and they eat it. <laughs> they eat it and they look classy and they do it somehow. But I sit there and I'm like, blah! You know, I'm all over the <laughs> Nutella place. everywhere. Yeah! No, I America! And then, <laughs> I don't know whether they were, they were scowling at me because of the uh, Nutella all over my face or running through their streets screaming America. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. That's right, that's right. I know. But. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, Vanderbilt, only time will tell if you're going to get to watch me see eat the end of the day. Probably not. Have a nice day. Get back to work. And maybe pull one of those all-nighters or one of those all-dayers. Probably more healthy.